Hello everybody, I have a little quick start guide for using the Torchmate program here. Uh, I am using the educational student version, so this is the free one you can download online. This is not intended to teach you how to use the program. This is intended to be used as a reminder once you know how to use a program. When you leave it for a few months, you'll forget some of the steps. So this is just a brief outline of a project from start to finish intended just to kind of trigger some of those things you know about the program but just kind of forgot that you should be doing them. Alright so the very first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make our uh, shape for our project here. So I'm just going to do a little rectangle. I'm going to make the size 24 inches long and let's go 12 inches tall and I'll just click on the screen here. There we've got our shape. Next we're going to add our design. So in this case I'm going to use some images. So I'm going to import this bow tie and I'll just throw that up there. I'm going to also add another little image here. I want this Camaro writing on there as well. So with those now what I'll do is turn those into um, vector images. So highlight the object, grab the scan tool here and we usually want that complex width detail I find the most success with. Click up there, close it and that will then let us remove that and there's our image left behind it. And I'll do the same thing to this one here. So again I'm just going to scan it, click, there we go. And you can see my image and I'll get rid of that. Okay, so I don't want all of this image, I just want the Camaro part, so I'm going to break that path so that I can get rid of everything I don't really care about. Nice little third gen I'm going to get rid of there, unfortunately, but not for this image. And I'm going to break this one, and we'll get rid of that inner one. There we go. Okay, so I got the bow tie, and I have the Camaro now. So what I'm going to do, first this guy here, as you'll find if I click on it it's all individualized we're gonna just group that together uh, control G there will be your shortcut for it and I'm gonna make it a bit bigger okay let's start laying it out on our project now so I want that Camaro you can type whoops I'm just gonna undo that you can type in the size of that Camaro um, up here if you have a, a specific measurement you want it to be and remember you can lock and unlock it if you want it to go taller but not wider you can unlock it if and that's if you want to keep it uh, if you don't care about its proportions if it's important that it stays proportionate then you're gonna to want to keep it locked alright so this one let's just make this 20 let's use it as an example there we go so my bow ties 20 Camaro's down there they look like a good size I'm going to take all those and I'm going to just center them on my uh, project here. So we're going to go to align, sign blank, and there they are. Now I'm just going to select them individually and just bop them up. Just using my keyboard, that way I ensure that I keep them exactly centered where they are, rather than using my mouse, which will be likely to not be perfect. All right that pretty much looks like my project I am gonna go and I'm gonna make a path with that right now if you recall if I hit my alt s it shows what's cut out what's not so we gotta make a path so that those are cut out So I'm gonna go make a path now when I hit alt s you can see there's my project pretty much done uh, don't forget though if you are going to make this um, cut this out you're gonna to have to do some tie-ins. If you do not do tie-ins, this is what your project's gonna end up looking like. And again, I'll go over this more in uh, one of my other videos. But let's just remember, we don't want it to cut out like that. That's not gonna look nice. So instead, we gotta weld all those in. So I'll bring them back. And to weld things, first and foremost, make sure that the project is you have a path made on it already and then let's add a shape to it. I like to use rectangle when I'm tying in and you'll have to determine what size is going to be best for your project. 
There we go. Now you can just hit Control D to duplicate when the object is highlighted and you don't need to get it perfect. So I'm going to duplicate that again. I'll put one there. I'm going to duplicate that again. And this comes down to trial and error and what you like, what you don't like. I'm going to put that just like that, just for example's sake. And we'll go here, stretch that one up. Instead of doing two, I'll just do one continuous one. And they're pretty much right where I want them. As I was saying, you don't have to make these perfect. We can adjust those later on, as long as they're not biting into the other parts of the object that you want to keep. All right, so we're going to hit our weld button here. And we're just going to use this first one. And that's what we're going to be left with. So this is how it's going to cut out now. You can see those center parts are not going to fall out. Unfortunately, this doesn't look real good. So we'll do a quick node adjustments on some of these. I'm just going to get rid of those nodes entirely. Get rid of those nodes entirely. And over here. Again, this is something you're going to have to play around with. And I'll give a better explanation of it in the video dedicated to adjusting your nodes. And that should do it. Okay, so now essentially I look at that. It's clean, everything's centered, it's the size I want. It's not really awesome. I'd probably spend a lot more time on that making it pretty, but for our quick guide, it looks pretty good. It gives you the general gist of how to do this. Okay, next I'm going to make my tool path. So I highlighted the object. I'm going to go to my tool path and I'm going to choose one of my tools. In this case, I want to use that mail tool. So that what I'm, so it's going to cut out everything that you see in white is going to be the part that gets cut out and we'll be left with what we see in black. And then I'm going to select the bottom left corner of that and I'm going to put in a decimal zero one. It's just a habit of mine to always use that number. And you always want to do that after you put your cut path on it. Otherwise your cut path ends up on the outside edge of this and then it won't transfer into um, the cut file for you. So that becomes a little confusing sometimes. And it's pretty much ready to go. I'd want to do a save of this and send it to the program that actually can convert these or someone that has a program that can actually convert these and get it cut out and there you have it. So that is your starter guide to using TorchMate CAD CAM. I hope that works for you. Thanks much.